Today's show is all about turning basic cakes into treats worthy of celebrations. And it's your imagination that's the limit. From berries to buttercream, caramel to chocolate, then even candy embellishments, you'll see how beautiful an ordinary cake can be. On today's show, I'll adorn three cakes with spectacular results. A naked berry cake, a caramel chiffon cake, and a woodland stump cake. Plus, Ron Ben Israel is here with his techniques for crafting sugar paste flowers. All today on Martha Bake. Not all cakes need to have fancy rosettes or globs of frosting. Today's cake, Naked Berry Chiffon Cake, uses a minimal amount of frosting, but an abundance of delicious berries instead. The combination of egg yolks and oil gives this cake an exceptionally fine crumb. And first we're going to sift the dry ingredients. We need two and three quarters cups of non-self-rising cake flour. One cup of granulated sugar. We have two and three quarters teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And you might say, oh, that's a lot. It's not a lot in a cake of this size. Whisk that well. Now for the wet ingredients, we have nine large egg yolks, a half a cup plus two tablespoons of safflower oil and one cup of whole milk. And we need a tablespoon pretty much the zest of one bright-skinned lemon. There. Now this gets mixed into your dry ingredients, but I want to start the egg whites because these are going to be folded into the batter. And we have 11 large egg whites. Break up the egg whites first, and then gradually add 3 quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar, and they'll start to get more frothy and more solid. A half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, and one vanilla bean split and scraped. I'm gonna add the vanilla bean seeds to our egg yolk mixture. And if you don't have a vanilla bean, you can use one teaspoon of vanilla extract for this cake. And now, we're going to mix the wet ingredients into the flour. This is our batter and our egg whites will be folded into this batter. This egg white part takes about five minutes to beat. Our pans, six inch and nine inch by two inch high. They have been buttered, fitted with a piece of parchment paper in the bottom, buttered again, and then lightly floured. I think this is pretty much as we want our egg whites. Stiff peaks. And you fold this into the batter once the egg whites are well incorporated. Each of the six inch pans gets two cups of batter and the rest divided in half between the nine inch pans. Your oven should be preheated to 325 degrees. Bake until golden brown. That takes about 25 minutes for the six inch cakes and about 30 minutes for the nine inch cakes. Here are our cakes. Look at that perfect layer. The cakes were cooled in their pans for about 10 minutes and then turned out onto wire racks. And once you take off the dome of the cake, then cut the cake in half into two layers. Now, I would suggest that you decorate the cake right on the serving platter. And we're using this pretty china cake stand. And we are going to build first the bottom four layers. And here's our whipped cream. This is sweetened with confectioner's sugar, four cups of heavy cream, and you can add a little vanilla if you wish. And spread this in an even layer. So there, that's number one. This cake will hold up in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, but I suggest doing this as close to serving time as possible. This is our top of the four bottom layers. It's what's going to hold the smaller cake. 
and that's going to be put on a cardboard. This is going to sit on top of the cake, but I'm going to create some spacers using chopsticks. I find those are the easiest to use. And not only are they supporting the top, they're also keeping these layers secure from sliding off one another. This is very important for building a tiered cake. So here, this is the bottom layer of the top that can sit right here. And you can see there's a space. We can fill that in with some whipped cream. And I must say, I love whipped cream as the frosting. It is so easy to apply. And now, if you are going to take this cake anywhere, I would suggest putting one more dowel right down through the middle like this. That will prevent this one from sliding. And now, of course, you use your berries blackberries on the top as well as around the perimeter. Blueberries, also beautiful on a cake like this. Raspberries, if you have golden raspberries, use them. And strawberries, so pretty. It takes a while to do this, so prepare yourself for the amount of time you're going to need to do the garnishing. And now, really pretty are these violas. That can be just interspersed here and there. These are sold as edible. You don't want to put on anything that may have been sprayed, so be very careful. Now the last thing to do is just pull this little support up a little bit and then use the bottom to push it right back down so it disappears. And there you have your naked cake. Not only beautiful, they're perfect for those who find frosting an entire cake daunting. And now, a little snow. Confectioner's sugar. Very pretty. Enjoy. For those of you who are fans of caramel, this cake is for you. Chiffon cake layers are filled and frosted with a decadent caramel-flavored Swiss meringue buttercream and then decorated with your favorite confections. First, make the caramel. We have a half a cup of water and one and a quarter of cups of granulated sugar. Let that come to a boil. And for the base of the frosting itself, we have nine egg whites, one cup of sugar, and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Whisk over boiling water just to dissolve the sugar. And the way you tell that it's done is when you rub the egg whites between your fingers, you don't feel any grains of sugar. I don't feel any. I think this is probably warm enough to put on the stand mixer. Start it on medium high. Add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. What we're looking for are stiff peaks. It takes about 10 minutes. And look what's happened over here. Look at the beautiful caramel color. And when this reaches the color you want, you add half a cup of heavy cream. It can erupt, so do it slowly so you don't have a mess all over your stove. That would not be fun to clean up. Stir that and put it in the ice. The ice immediately stops the cooking and you have this lovely caramel. Oh, now that is the color you want. Isn't that pretty? So the egg whites have reached peak. They're very beautiful. And now we're going to add one and a half pounds of butter cut into half inch pieces at room temperature. The caramel is going to go into the frosting after the butter has been added. So once your caramel is cooled, pour this right into your frosting. You now just keep mixing until all the caramel is incorporated into your frosting. So now it's time to assemble our caramel cake. This recipe uses the same chiffon cake recipe as the naked berry cake. Cut each cake layer into three equal pieces. And now we're going to put an equal layer of frosting in between each of the six layers of cake. Half cup of frosting, important to work quickly. 
and in a cool place. I like to use these big flat spatulas. Spread this. And now we have some old fashioned malt balls just crushed. You can put them in a plastic bag and bang them with your rolling pin. And the crunch inside the layers is really great. Now get your next layer on and continue frosting, adding crushed malted milk balls between each layer. So well, that's a nice looking cake. Now spread the frosting over the top and down the sides. The whole idea is a simple coating with an elaborate top. So now for the fun part, decorate your cake with caramel polka dots. This is just sugar syrup cooked to the hard bowl stage and drop little bits on a nonstick baking sheet. These are so pretty. Place them kind of strategically so that you can make slices. Think about that. So you can get very inspired doing decorations like this. And then malt balls. Why not put some malt balls on this cake? Milk chocolate malt balls, dark chocolate malt balls. The colors are beautiful. And then why not some chocolate curls? You can just put those here or there on top of the cake, kind of randomly placed. These are milk chocolate curls. Now we have some dark chocolate curls. Those two can be randomly placed atop the cake. Very easy to make. Melt the chocolate, put in a thin layer on a sheet, and then with a metal scraper, just curl up the chocolate. Do you like polka dots? Do you like caramel? Using your favorite confections, makes life and your cakes just a little bit sweeter. Enjoy. Our modern version of the traditional Yule log cake is an elaborate creation using the same chiffon cake rolled and filled with chocolate hazelnut cream covered in chocolate bark and festooned with candied mushrooms and pistachio moss. And now my roulade has just come out of the oven on a muslin towel, sprinkle lots of sugar and turn the cake out right onto the towel. There it is. Released nicely. Peel off the parchment paper. What a beautiful cake. This really is a great recipe. Sprinkle this side with just a little bit of confectioner's sugar. I know I just said that these cakes were the same chiffon cake recipe used in the other cakes in the show, but I omitted the lemon zest, and I decreased the proportions of the ingredients slightly to accommodate baking it in two rimmed baking sheets. And now roll this up short end all the way, and you want to roll the towel inside, being careful not to crack the cake. This cake is so malleable, so flexible. So that's cake number one, and here's our second cake. So now comes the best part of the stump cake, the decorating. 10 ounces of white chocolate gently melted, mixed with three to four tablespoons of corn syrup. The corn syrup makes it soft enough so you can mold it with your fingers. You do the same thing with your dark chocolate. So now put this right on a piece of plastic wrap and set it aside. So now for the filling of the cake six tablespoons of chocolate hazelnut spread and a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. And we have three cups of whipped cream beaten to soft peaks with a half a cup of confectioner's sugar. That is our filling. The reason I added the heavy cream is just to loosen up that hazelnut spread. Now put this right into your whipped cream and blend well. And now it's time to assemble our stump cake. Here are our chiffon cakes. Unwrap both and then roll them back up again and cut each cake into three equal pieces. All right, so take one piece and 
unroll it and spread a nice even layer of your hazelnut whipped cream on this. You need about a cup. Spread it in a nice even layer. Okay, so now roll this up and stand it up. Now, why am I standing it up? Well, what I really would like is when you slice into the cake, you're going to have vertical layers in each slice. And here's our second piece. So just keep going around like that with successive layers. And as you finish, then get this right into the refrigerator and chill it. So here is the cake all round up. And here is our white molding chocolate. And roll this into a round that will fit over the top of that cake stump. Cut that into a round. A few cracks will be okay. And place it on top of the cake. The cake's approximately nine inches in diameter. And this is nine and a half, that's good. Tuck the edges down. The bark will come up and encase the edges. So there, first step. And now we'll roll out the dark chocolate. This is the bark of the tree. To make it look like bark, I just mark it with the square edge of this spoon. So you can just brush off the powdered sugar. And on the back side, you just brush with a little bit of water, which will act as a adhesive to make this stick to the cake. Now this is why it's called molding chocolate it really does mold right to where you want it to go. Crunkle this up, make it look like it's in the woodland. I think that's looking good. Starting to look like a tree trunk. Now continue piece by piece until you go all the way around our magnificent stump cake. So I'm now doing the final decorating. You can see that we've really crimped the chocolate so that it looks like the roots growing into the ground. A little bit of dirt around the top here, which is really dark cocoa. This is the fun part. I love doing this faux painting. We have to cut some lines on the top to resemble cracks. You can use the sharp edge of the knife or the back edge of the knife. And of course, every tree has yearly growth. And you tell that by the rings of the tree and you can just make a little bit of wet cocoa. Get the gist? It's going to look like a faux bois stump. Nice. Then we have some melted chocolate that can be put here and there. And some moss, which is finely ground pistachios. This beautiful green. And that can just be put here and there before you make a tree like this, go out into your woods and take a look at what they look like. Does the moss grow up the tree? Of course it does. Looking very pretty. Oh, I like this too. I like these shards of chocolate sort of look like pine needles that you would find on the forest floor. Remnants of the caramel cake. And now if you want, you can fashion some cremini now these with the cottage cheese tops, deadly poisonous. Any mycologist will tell you to stay away from these. All of these are made out of a fondant, so they're totally edible, <laughs> despite their poison appearance. It's incredible. No cakes are more adorned than wedding cakes, and today, wedding cake designer par excellence. Ron Ben Israel is here to share his expertise for creating breathtaking sugar paste flowers. It's so nice to have you back in the studio. I'm so Ron. excited to work yeah. with you again. I thought it would be fun for our viewer and mm -hmm. educational too to uh, show how you create an edible peony. So I made those. I bought plastic sheets and I put acetate. Yes. So they keep the sugar paste moist. Yes. And also you can roll out nicely in, in exactly. between. Exactly. And I just put a little shortening. Okay. And then you can cut variety of sizes. 
there's a set of 12, so I can make tiny peonies and giant flowers. And I'm going to cut little notches because typically the peony has an uneven edge. Then if you can notch them. We jumped ahead here and now we insert a cloth covered wire in the center of each petal, about a third of the height. Once they're wired, we move on to the next step. This is two screws inserted into a wooden dowel and these are ball bearings that are sorted and by soft pressure we'll just thin the edges. I actually run it like a pen and sometimes you press too hard and the whole thing rips but we can remake. <laughs> okay, well, they're pretty when they right? get like that. Yeah. So now you can center it in the middle of the silicone press. This I sculpted on clay and then made the two halves so we will get the imprints. Oh, how gorgeous. Right. Oh. I'll flex it out. Look. Oh, I did it. But wait, there's more. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to take the small part and roll it back a little bit along the ridges to cup the edges. Oh, this is so pretty. And then? So we have petals that have rested for 24 hours. Oh, yes. So this is one set. And we'll touch them up with powdered food colors to get light and shadow. Okay. So we have pink, which is very strong, and a little cornstarch. So we can put a little cornstarch on the brush and then a little bit of pink. This is exciting process of figuring out where do I want the shadow to be. I usually start with the edges. And then the color that falls, I just brush in between the grooves. So it's a little bit like makeup for sugar. Uh -huh. Now we're gonna tie the petal into a completed flower. So 14 petals for an average size peony. Uh, there's also the centers. So these I learned actually from you, uh -huh. how to make a pom-pom. So we take a thread, cotton thread, and wrap it around two fingers, cut it up, and we have those little pom-poms. But they look like the natural oh, stamens. Yeah. stamens. Then I moisten them a little bit with the egg whites or sugar glue and dip them into the cornmeal that has a little extra yellow pigments. And I also made a few of those, they're called pods, I think, that contain the stamens. Oh, yes. And floral tape, which is non-toxic. So I'm tying them one by one, just like silk flowers are made. Mm. And the idea is to add the, the wire and wrap it well so nothing shows. And there is a steamer that will help us set all the colors. The steaming will give us a natural sheen and the flower will come to life. Oh, look what it does. You see immediately, oh. just the oh, right amount, yeah. give it the glow. That is perfect. So what do you call this beautiful cascading? Elongated grouping. Elongated grouping by Ron Ben Israel. <laughs> and Martha Stewart. Okay. Well, I'm happy to learn something new today. It's uh, very exciting. And thank you very much for showing us the art of flower making. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. And thank you all at home for watching. We'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. <laughs> Using a dab of frosting, secure a piece of parchment paper to a flower nail. With a round tip, Pipe an acorn shape onto the parchment. Switch to a petal tip and pipe a strip completely covering the top of the acorn. Creating half circles overlap petals until you reach the bottom of the rose. Once chilled, your rose is ready to be placed on top of a cake or cupcake.